Hello heroes, Kelthar of the Heroes and Legends, and welcome to my review slash theory crafting slash tinfoil hat on Harbinger's Gul'dan. Blizzard has decided to craft these wonderful short stories highlighting key characters from the upcoming World of Warcraft expansion, Legion. I'm really excited to be doing this. Uh, I did a lot of gameplay for Legion. Uh, for the beta, still working on getting some more artifact stuffed out. But uh, my real passion for this universe is the lore. And this talks heavily about that. Um, after watching this several times, I got this crazy tinfoil hat in my head. But before we jump into all of that, we're going to do a little synopsis of the episode or the short itself. And then I'll jump into my review. And then finally the tinfoil hat and questions I that have raised in my head and hopefully you enjoy hearing my thoughts on it. In the background we're gonna have images from the short and images of important characters that are relevant to the lore as uh, as it as it comes about. So here we're without further ado, follow me into my review. Theory crafting, tinfoil hat, harbingers, golden. In this short, we see Gul'dan's terrible beginnings as a failed member of his clan. A cripple from birth, he is ridiculed, beaten, and tortured by the stronger members of the clan, such as the chieftain and many other warriors. His only help would come from the elder shaman of his clan. One that gave guidance and wisdom to the rest of the clan, even Gul'dan with his crippled body. But even with his help, it was never enough and the warriors of the clan tired of Gul'dan's weakness. He is eventually cast out and faces a life alone with only the dark thoughts and lost whispers of his mind to keep him company. In a pivotal moment, the Elder Shaman's voice tells him to go to the Throne of the Elements, where he witnesses the spiritual energy whirling around the place before it stops just before his hand. As if sensing his hatred, the Elements flee before he can grasp them. Abandoned once more, and this time by the very Elements, he is now a broken shell of an orc and cries out in rage before facing the soaked ground underneath him. A drop of rain pools at his head and falls into the water, giving rise to another, somewhat sinister presence. A second, almost foreboding voice whispers as demonic fell energy rises from the water where the drop landed. The voice of the Legion, or more likely killed Jaden himself, calls out and grants him the dark and twisted power of fell energy only if he were to use it in a dark and twisted way, to become a harbinger of the Legion's fury. Returning to the clan that spurned him, he unleashes his newfound power upon them and erases them from existence. First the chieftain and warriors that tortured him, then the shaman that tried to help him. Thus, as he says in the beginning, that no one living knows of the village of his birth, and with his first act of terror, nobody will. Okay, now we're going to go over just a few points I have. Um, I have a pretty crazy tinfoil hat that I've been cooking up uh, ever since watching this. But let me just go over my thoughts of the presentation. Uh, sort of give it a quick review before I jump into crazy lore theories and spinouts and such. Okay, so firstly, this is the story of alternate universe Gul'dan, not the original Gul'dan who had a different origin. Our timeline's Gul'dan is a shaman apprentice to Ner'zhul and member of the Shadow Moon clan. With a lust for power, he abandons shamanism and his people to kill Jaden and enslaves them all, bringing about their demonic corruption. He uses his power to found the Shadow Council and prepare the Horde for an invasion of Azeroth. Though a slightly different origin, their motivations are very similar. Alternate Universe Gul'dan has an ambition for power very much like our own, 
but in this short story he uses it firstly for revenge and then to create a world where he is the master. So the art of this series is unmatched. It reminds me a lot of the uh, burdens of Shao Hao that they created for Mists of Pandaria. It's, it's very similar to that, um, but I think it's like taking to the next step. It's breathtaking. It's almost like paintings come to life, complete with amazing voice acting and the music. It just sets the tone. I was completely floored watching it. I had, you know, had to watch it over and over again because I was just like, oh, when's the next one coming out? But what I really want is like a movie of this. If not a movie, a long form story using this style. Something that like extends the story. I mean, it's a very short thing. And it's very impactful, but I want to see more. I'm just getting addicted to it. Blizzard, please, please, I need this. So as I started to watch this, I really did kind of start to feel sympathy for Gul'dan. Almost. He is dealt a terrible hand of fate to be born crippled and weak. But instead of using the little help he receives, he grows bitter and angry. I loved the portrayal of emotions in the eyes of Gul'dan. The images they painted or drew show the eyes showing fear when he's being beaten, anger when he's being judged, then it moves on to hope when the elements are flying towards him. You can see that shimmer that is this my redemption? Curiosity when the fell energies rise from the water and he's watching them swirl to the left to the right. Madness when he's about to slay the shaman elder. I'm gonna get back to that moment in a little bit later. And then finally, the unmitigated fury as the screen fades to black around his red eyes. Blizzard does an A plus job conveying the emotion through the eyes. I could see, like if only they showed eyes, I could tell kind of how he was feeling. If you just kind of black everything out, you could really read everything about Gul'dan just looking at his eyes. Then there were the whispers that Gul'dan hears in the middle of the, of, the, of the short, of his own voice repeating the shaman's words to seek out the throne of the elements, giving him that small shred of hope and humbling him at the same time because he is on the verge of breaking. Then finally, the voice calling out his name as the fell magic coalesced in front of him, killed Jaden the Deceiver, granting him mastery of fell, of fell in exchange for becoming an instrument of the Legion, a harbinger of its power. Now, I'm pretty sure it's Kil'jaeden, because Kil'jaeden is the one who grants him power to our original Gul'dan, and so it's got to be Kil'jaeden. If not, maybe it's Sargeras. We don't, I don't really know for sure. I don't think Sargeras had a, that much of a hand in Gul'dan's growing, and it seems like at the end of Warlords, the little cutscene where he's like, I granted you this, and you failed me, and then he's like, oh, but more on that later. Going back to what I was saying about the elder shaman there was a foreshadowing that I was like like giddy with excitement when I saw it the foreshadowing with the image of the shaman in the very beginning holding Gul'dan's shoulder showing caring and sympathy and then towards the end it replays because Gul'dan shows a similar pose as he lays his hand on the shaman's shoulder showing the same caring face before twisting it into a sneer of hatred and madness it really shows the expert storytelling and subtle imagery at play portraying Gul'dan's descent into chaos. I loved it. It was just, it was the beginning. He's like, you know, I'm sorry. I feel sorry for you. In the end, he's like, I feel sorry for you, not. And then crazy chaotic. It's just, it was amazing. But now let me leap into a question. Well, a theory slash tinfoil hat that I kind of started to think about as I was watching this and I watched it over and over and over and it just sort of reinforced it and then the idea just came into my head. Was A.U. Gul'dan a puppet from the beginning, handpicked by Kil'jaeden for this very purpose? Is he born like this as fated by the manipulations of destiny? Or is it truly his cries of anguish that reach out to the Legion that Kil'jaeden hears and then decides to take advantage of? I kinda like the thought of the darker side of fate conspiring to create this version of Gul'dan, one that Kil'jaeden takes notice of and possibly has a hand in deceiving because, well, he's the deceiver. He creates a life that no being, be they orc, 
human, Draenei, or anyone can walk away from without being a scarred, warped tool for the Legion's machinations. To go even further, is the real reason that nobody knows of this Gul'dan's village because it never existed in the first place? Is it all a vision planted by Kil'jaeden into Gul'dan to create a being of pure hatred and fury? A tool that he can use to grow his power and the Legion's power, to reach and appease his master, Sargeras? Is, is this all just... I was, I was watching it and I was like, what if... Like, I mean, they never say the names of any of the people. They just say, they show a village, and he's kicked out of the village, and then, you know, you, you saw it. And then, what is the end game for A.U. Gul'dan? As we have seen in Warlords, he eventually fails due to our own intervention, but is given a second chance. In Legion, what is his end game? Playing off of my kind of theory tinfoil hat from earlier, what if Kill Jaden creates the tool that is Gul'dan, only to further the Legion's reach into Azeroth, knowing that we are going to be there to stop it. He creates a tool that will either get the job done or be discarded for a much more powerful tool. We see in the Legion teaser that he is being sent into the Vault of the Wardens to retrieve Illidan's Stormrage. The Legion must know of the potential Illidan has in destroying them, so Kill Jaden starts by creating the visions in this tool of his, Gul'dan, it becomes a harbinger of fury, but as we have intervened, Kil'jaeden sees the remaining usefulness of this tool dwindling. So he creates one last task for Gul'dan, to retrieve and corrupt Illidan to become the next tool for the Deceiver. Sometimes when you're creating something, you have a tool and it's not enough to get the job done, you get another tool. And so it's it's kind of a poor choice of words i guess a tool but i mean that's really what he is he's given power by the deceiver what if the the life that he believes in or the life that he think he lived didn't actually happen what if like he's born and kill jaden is already you know watching over draenor checking out this alternate draenor working with this world creating an army and he says this one will be my tool. And he creates like an image in this baby orc's head or orc's head. This is what happened to him. Also crippling him, causing him to live a life that it is or life that never happened, but he thinks it happened. And then, boom. But then he didn't count on us. On us completely thwarting his plans. And he's like, well, now I got to use this tool for something else. And they know that Illidan's coming. And Illidan's has potential for even more power. And he's like, I need... A better tool. So he uses one tool for a better tool. This first episode was definitely an eye opener for me, and in the next one, I will try and tie Cadgar's role as the ultimate folly to Gul'dan, the device that shatters the tool created by the Deceiver. How the denizens of Azeroth are the tools against once again, the tools of the final Titan that will be used to counter the Legion and save the universe. So every one of us on Azeroth is a device or a tool of the final titan azeroth we are it's the lives there and we're going to be used to fight the final war to destroy the legion and possibly if you've uh if you've read any of chronicle possibly the the void itself which is supposed to be even more powerful than the legion and so that was my review slash crazy little theory as to what's really going on based off of Harbinger's Gul'dan. I really hope you guys enjoyed that. I had a heck of a time talking about it and I'm so glad to get some of my lore thoughts out there in the world for you all to enjoy. So in the next one I will do Harbinger's Cadgar and try to tie it together with what happened here. Um, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.